So uh, I'm from Warsaw, in Poland, and um, I'm a final year student uh, once again, and ho I hope the last one, uh, at Warsaw University of Technology. Uh, in my talk, I'll tell you about FreeBSD testing cluster, which I made during uh, Google Summer of Code uh, previous year. Uh, I'll begin from short in introduction about the project, and then I'll move on uh, possible use cases. Next, uh, I'll show you architecture and hardware I use. Uh, after that, uh, I'll show you software and how to configure services. Uh, and put them together to a cluster. Uh, next topic will be the workflow divided by node and the revision statuses. And finally, i try to tell you about the future of this project. Uh, FreePSD test cluster automation is a Google Summer of Code uh, 2015 project for FreePSD organization. Uh, to create an infrastructure for automated test building, installing, and first booting process of FreePSD operating system. Uh, the base of this project uh, is IPXC. IPXC is uh, open source boot firmware, which I use for controlling boot process and nodes. Uh, and MFSBSD, to run this class machine. Machine have disk, of course, uh, but only to uh, install uh, FreePSD and first boot. Uh, to provide storage and uh, jails for services, I use FreeNAS with uh, FS file system. Uh, FreePSD currently uses Jenkins for two tests, uh, to test uh, all commits from one period of time uh, and on the behave virtual machines. So um, this project is infrastructure for testing every single commit on bare metal machine. Uh, the most important requirement during this project was a little intervention as possible, and I added one more, as cheap as possible. Uh, besides uh, FreeBSD kernel and the world building, there are a lot of possible use cases of this project. For example, testing uh, drivers, for example, network card drivers inside cluster, uh, it's possible to build a driver after any commit, test it, measure, report, uh, results, then compile once again, test, measure, report. So, uh, imagine, imagination is the limit. Um, let's go to the architecture. Uh, what we need to build a uh, testing cluster. The first thing is uh, server uh, or servers for storage services and management application. I used one machine with free NAS. Uh, services and management are on the JS. Uh, I don't need a power redundancy on so something like this, so uh, my lab uh, was cheap. Uh, the second thing we need are, of course, nodes. How many? It depends on time for tests and uh, on the amount of incoming, incoming commits. And the last thing we need is some network. I use standard Ethernet, one gigabyte uh, of speed. On this side, I describe my lab for the project. Uh, for some people uh, on this room, it may be an instruction how not to build NAS. Uh, but it's completely enough for my project, and as I said before, as cheap as possible. Uh, CPU is AMD Athlon uh, quad-core processor with uh, IS acceleration, motherboard, cheapest uh, ASRock, uh, 16 gigabytes of RAM without ECC correction. Um, I bought Intel dual port network card with uh, four LACP used uh, from uh, eBay. Uh, the most expensive was case after design, so it's something crazy in this price list. Uh, total price for the server was about $330 without um, disks. For nodes, I use my old computer, so uh, nice to have uh, more than 4 gigabytes of RAM, um, 
and uh, must have network card with Pixie uh, boot support. For Switch, uh, the cheapest with LACP, I hope, the cheapest was Tip Link. Let's see the list of the software. I described uh, all of them later. So, first is IPXA Open Source Boot Firmware. Uh, MFS BSD, minimal installation of free BSD located into memory. Uh, free NAS, it's an operating system to build your own NAS based on free BSD. Uh, and, uh, and services. We need DSTP server, TFTP server for netbooting to IPX firmware. We need the uh, HTTP server to provide images. In uh, this case, I use Apache, but it doesn't matter which I which HTTP server you use. Next service is uh, NFS. It's uh, shared storage for source code, uh, results and uh, results of compil results of compilation, and the log files. Uh, the last uh, one service is management application, and it's written in Python with bottle uh, framework. Uh, information about uh, notes and the revisions is saved uh, on the SQLite database. IPixie is uh, something amazing. It's an open source implementation of Pixie client and bootloader, and it can be used to boot computer for network and supports many protocols such as HTTP, HTTPS, FTP, NFS, iSCSI, ATA over Ethernet, Fiber Channel over Ethernet, Infinity Band, and Surprise Wireless Network. Uh, you can boot operating system from a wireless card. Uh, and of course, we can control IPC by scripts. And if you need, VLAN tagging is also supported. So, the first step of my work was um, port. I made a port to compile IPC firmware on FreeBSD. And um, today it's too late to submit because somebody did this uh, a week ago. And I think there is a place to improve existing port because they um, have uh, um, one of the dependencies is in bash, so we can remove it, of course. So, as you can see, there is a lot of options and protocols to use, um, but there is a, not a full list, of course. We can see, for example, fiber channel over Ethernet, IP4.6, uh, NFS, HTTPS, FTP VLAN, Serial Console, Syslog Console, Encrypted uh, Syslog Console, and it's not, not, not all. Next part of this project is MFS BSD. And this is a set of scripts for generating bootable images with minimal installation of FreeBSD. And you can find sources on GitHub and sources after my modification on my SVN repository. There is not many changes besides configuration in rc.conf and uh, rc.local uh, files. And I removed this fetch step from BSD install because uh, we um, can use uh, compiled these files. So the last step is creating ISO with base parameter, which is path to local copy of distribution files. Created image I use for netbooting uh, FreeBSD. Let's now take a look on FreeNAS. I use 10.3 10, 10 uh, stable version. I created separated data sets, data, data set with the duplication for source code. It is uh, allowed to me. Uh, this allowed uh, to save a lot uh, of revisions without big data consumption. So uh, for a TFTP service, uh, I use native server from FreeNAS. Uh, but for other services like HTTP server uh, and the management application, I use uh, JS with shared uh, ZFS storage. This is the list of services once again. In this part of presentation, I'll briefly describe configuration of all. This is the configuration from my DHCP server. 
uh, as you can see, server sends different file name options, and it depends what sends a request. In the first step, uh, after post tests, the network card sends a request by PC uh, protocol, DHCP, server password, uh, is location of IPXC binary KPXE image. Uh, on the TFTP server uh, from option next server. In second step, uh, when a request sends IPXC client and then server recognizes it by user class uh, and the answer is different. It's option with uh, URL address to IPX script. This is an example of configuration of the TFTP server on Freenas. It's, um, it's, de it's default, so nothing, nothing to add. It's a place where um, I stored only um, KPX file for, uh, for uh, IPX executing. So um, next service is uh, HTTP server. Its uh, configuration is really basic. I need uh, only for providing uh, images, exactly one image of MFSBSD and mem, mem disk if somebody needs it, but it's not required. Uh, as I said before, I use Apache, Apache but I, it doesn't matter which HTTP server you use. Let's now move on the management application. Um, it's written in Python and it's used uh, for managing nodes and revisions. This is the list of uh, example supported methods. First of them is many Mac. Um, application returns a static IPC script, which name is saved uh, on the database. Uh, on the record with MAC address. MAC address is a variable and uh, IPC client can use it, of course. The second uh, is changeable. In this method, client or server can change the name of IPC static file um, for host uh, to new name. For example, when client did uh, everything, may change device to boot after reboot. Uh, the third uh, take task client sends to the management information that is ready to take a new task. The last two methods uh, are used for changing statuses node and status, uh, and the revision status. On this slide, I show you IPX scripts and uh, I um, I use for control the, the boot process on nodes. The first script is uh, take task. It's really simple script. Uh, we start from IPX shebang and set two variables. Uh, and in the last one step, client sets information to the management that is clean and is ready to take new task. On this time, management changes name of the IPX static file on the database to wait IPX. The second script, wait IPX, is a loop. Uh, during environment preparation, every uh, 120 seconds, IPC client asks the management about actual static file name. While server is not ready, management sends wait IPC file, and at the same at the some point when finished preparation, uh, sends cluster uh, IPC. Cluster IPC script. <laughs> That is only information where ISO file with MFSBSD located is, uh, and the boot from it by some boot device. The last script I used for boot uh, from from HD drive via some boot device after this test tests and installation. Let's now move on the node mode, mode work workflow. The nodes, uh, the node starts from and booting. <laughs> the reboot execution environment allows to boot from a network interface, host broadcasts a DHCP discover and a request, uh, request and uh, a DHCP server response with a DHCP packet that includes PIX information on the name 
uh, information with um, the name of the boot server and the boot file. Uh, in my example, it was uh, on the only uh, KPX file. The client downloads his boot file by using TFTP and then executes it. In this uh, step, it's IPX binary file. In the next step, IPX sends DHCP request and give an answer with a different file name option, a URL to IPX script in general. Next, uh, next status uh, is a take task. And then um, at this moment, uh, take task sh script is running. Um, take task is status when um, node is clear and uh, ready for uh, for work. So um, IPX runs next time loading uh, to wait IPX script and node is waiting for environment preparation. So let's see what's going on on the server. This is a part of script take task sh. So we have two parameters. Uh, first is number of revision, and second is host name. Uh, we have um, below we can uh, see change task status to wait. So next change uh, revision on main SVN3. Uh, next is everything to the new revision. Uh, then we have to second just to send the number and the revision to place where no, where can node read from. So not to uh, have to know which revision uh, may compile. And th at the end, um, take uh, task sh script, change next boot file for cluster IPX and the revision status to running. Uh, the node change status to running IPX static files. A file is a cluster IPX and at this moment IPX runs MFS BSD, uh, which after boot mounts share with run sh script and executes it. So this is a run sh script. Let's briefly describe what a script exactly do. Uh, this is a part of course. Uh, in the first line we can see that the node is reading the number of revision and the next mounts um, its sources. The second mount is not required when the node has enough RAM memory to store object file files uh, on RAM. Uh, below we can see how to do some logs and then split changes statuses of node and revision and job starts. And finally, uh, we can log finish of work. After building the node, try to install the system on a hard drive from files compiled and written during this task. So uh, there is, of course, changes of statuses and in condition installation with ESD install. If everything is fine, revision status is changed to done and the node status to HDDIPXE. When installation fails, node sets file status for the revision and take task for the node. The last one step is reboot. And we can see the node reboots. The last one step is booting from hard drive. Of course, if any steps from building, installing, and, and booting uh, storage files, uh, then the node says status failed for the revision and starts the booting with new task. Uh, next node status is in booting with take task flag, and we can do something different. So um, now I'll show you our revision statuses. So the first status is, uh, of revision is new. Uh, in this revision, in this status revision awaits for free node to take a task. When the node starts at booting and the revision uh, is first in the QA status, 
that is changes to preparing. And uh, then uh, script take task uh, is uh, running at this moment. Uh, in the next step, revision is tested by compilation, installation, and um, boot. This is compilation, installation, boot. The last possible status of revision is success or fails, and the logs uh, of every step are available on the NFS chart. Uh, so that's all I wanted to say about the results of the project, but I have something um, for the future, because I plan to continue the project uh, as my master thesis. So uh, what, can I, um, what I can improve? Uh, the first thing is architecture of scripts. It's better to prepare revision before node, node net booting instead of waiting for this when node has nothing to do. Uh, next, next thing is automatic task adding. At this moment, I have to do it manually. Uh, I can omit commits with typo or documentation changes, for example. Mm. I don't have something like a watchdog with management node, like I IPMI or AMT console, and when something goes completely wrong, I have to manually restart the node. So it should be easy to implement, but I don't have access to hardware with um, IPMI or AMT support. So another um, thing is GUI. I'm not a web developer, but I try to add some nice features, for example, logs on the GUI, and of course, comments and requests are welcome. Before I finish, I'd like to invite you to use sets of scripts from ipxc.pl website. The main is uh, menu ipxc. You can uh, load it on ipxc loader by chain command. So, um, this is the list of supported operating systems, <coughs> Linux uh, distributions and tools. Not everything uh, has been published yet, but I'm working on it. And I have uh, this is the script one machine on VirtualBox, and um, I can show you how it works. So uh, I started IPC with loader, and uh, I changed to menu menu. So we can see what is uh, on the list, and let's try to MFS BSD, for example, 10.2 10 release. We have um, to wait because uh, ISO files is downloaded uh, from official mirrors. I don't have anything stored on my website, so uh, sometimes uh, we have to uh, download something from from Europe, for example. At this moment, it's uh, from Martin Matuska uh, official website. This machine is, of course, diskless, and uh, it uh, has only network connection to, uh, to the wireless network. Starts. 
So we can uh, try FreeBSD without installing uh, on the hard drive. Default password. So that's all. Questions, maybe? Only compiling the revisions uh, from right. Yes, exactly. Make FTP and uh, install to the public. So I not focused uh, on the test because uh, my project was a for test. So we have to uh, carry on the test uh, itself. At this moment, no, but I'm working on it. Um, we can uh, download ISO um, via HTTPS protocol and uh, sign ISO and compare uh, signs uh, uh, under IPC firmware. So it's possible to be uh, safer than uh, standard HTTP protocol. We cannot trust uh, checksums because uh, uh, we saw something strange situation like uh, Linus Mint uh, last month, so uh, <coughs> signing images is better. So please don't hesitate to contact me if you need uh, any assistance. I can email the handouts uh, to anybody who wants it. And uh, if there, uh, there are no questions, I'd like to thank you uh, for coming. Yeah.